When we see a bright star next to a dim star, what does that mean? Is the bright star really brighter or is it just closer? And when we say bright, do we mean how much light is reaching our eyes or how much light is that object giving off? Just how do we measure light in astronomy? You may have heard the term apparent magnitude. This is a very old way to measure the brightness of stars. In fact, it dates back to the earliest cataloging of the stars, started by the Greek astronomer Hipparchus around 130 BC and completed by Ptolemy around 150 AD. This system classified 1,022 stars in 48 constellations into six magnitudes, one being the brightest and six being the faintest, just visible to the naked eye. Does this seem backwards to you? Here's what Hipparchus was thinking. The first stars to appear just after sunset are the brightest, so he said they were of the first magnitude, and assigned them magnitude 1. If you wait a little while and it gets a little darker out, more stars appear, so those are called magnitude 2. We continue like this all the way down to stars of magnitude 6, which are so dim you can only see them when the sky is completely dark. When people started using telescopes to look at the sky in the 1600s, the apparent magnitude scale had to be extended to even dimmer stars. Also, in this system, it's possible for some bright heavenly bodies to have a negative apparent magnitude. Think of the moon, for instance. It appears much brighter to us than the brightest star. The full moon has an average apparent magnitude of about negative 12. At its brightest, Venus is a negative 4. Our sun is about negative 26. Another detail was added to the concept of apparent magnitude in the 1800s, when scientists discovered that human vision works on a logarithmic scale. Astronomers agreed to a system where five steps down in apparent magnitude means a star has a hundred times greater apparent brightness. But we're still faced with this puzzle. Is a star with a low apparent magnitude brighter because it's actually giving off more light? Or is it just closer to us? To better visualize this problem, let's bring it closer to home. If you put a standard high pressure 250 watt sodium light bulb in a street light, it casts a certain amount of light. But if that same bulb is down at the end of the block, it looks a lot dimmer. The farther away we get from the street light, the dimmer it looks. Just because we move away from a street light, it doesn't mean the light bulb actually dims. It still puts out the same number of lumens. In the case of those street lights, 27,000 lumens. A lumen is the SI unit of luminous flux, a measure of the total quantity of visible light emitted by a source per unit time. But wait, earlier I said it was a 250 watt bulb. Why am I talking about lumens now? Even here on Earth, we're changing how we talk about how bright a light is. For years, wattage was typically the measure of light bulb's brightness. Watts are a unit of power equal to one joule per second. But our perspective has changed since various forms of more efficient lighting, especially LED lights, have become more practical. You can get the same lumens or brightness with much fewer watts. For example, you get 450 lumens from a standard 40-watt incandescent light bulb or a 29-watt halogen bulb, a 9-watt compact fluorescent bulb, and a 6-watt LED bulb. Hmm, let's hear it for progress. No matter what kind of light you're using, there's a drop-off in apparent brightness as you move away. And this drop-off follows a predictable pattern. We call this the inverse square law. As the distance we move away increases, the light has to spread over a larger surface area and the brightness decreases in a one over distance squared relationship. In other words, apparent brightness is proportional to one over the distance squared. It's easy for us to measure the distance between us and the street light. But what about the distance between us and the stars? How can we tell how bright something actually is if we don't know how far away it is? Astronomers use a different term to describe the production of light, luminosity. It's a measure of a star's intrinsic brightness as opposed to apparent brightness. Luminosity tells us the rate the star is radiating energy out in all directions. 
Imagine a sphere of light coming off from the star. Apparent brightness tells us how much of that energy reaches us so we can detect it with our eyes or a telescope. We can express this relationship mathematically as B equals L over four pi times D squared, where B is the intensity or apparent brightness in watts per meter squared, L is the luminosity of the star in watts, and D is equal to the distance to the star in meters. In other words, the brightness of a star equals its luminosity divided by the surface area of the sphere. The traditional form of this equation was in watts, but you'll also often see the luminosity of a star compared to our sun. We can use our own sun as a standard for brightness. A solar luminosity unit is written like this. That circle with a dot is a symbol for our sun. So in these terms, what sort of luminosities do we see? There is a wide range. You may know about Proxima Centauri, our closest neighboring star outside of our own solar system. It's 1.3 parsecs away, and its visual luminosity is 0.00005 solar luminosities. You'll need a good telescope to see that. On the other end of the scale, deep in the Carina Nebula, is Eta Carina. It's 2300 parsecs away, yet we can see it with our naked eye. That's because it has an intrinsic brightness of almost 5 million solar luminosities. To standardize these comparisons in terms of distance, astronomers use the term absolute magnitude. This is the apparent magnitude a star would have if it were a distance of 10 parsecs from Earth. So for example, if our sun were moved to 10 parsecs away from us, its apparent magnitude would now be plus 4.8 instead of negative 26. So the absolute magnitude of our sun is plus 4.8. Remember, with these magnitude scales, less is more. Negative magnitudes are brighter than positive magnitudes. Drawing comparisons between a star's apparent magnitude and its absolute magnitude allows us to address that persistent puzzle, whether a star is especially bright because it's close or because it's actually giving off a lot of light. If a star is exactly 10 parsecs away, its apparent magnitude exactly equals its absolute magnitude. There are some stars right around this distance. Pollux in the Gemini constellation is pretty close at 33.8 light years away, or 10.4 parsecs. That means its apparent magnitude should be close to its absolute magnitude, and it is. 1.14 versus 1.09. But if a star is farther away than 10 parsecs, that means the star looks dimmer than it really is. The flip side is if a star is closer than 10 parsecs, it appears brighter than its true luminosity. Here's how to resolve the situation. We can take the difference between the apparent magnitude and the absolute magnitude, a calculation called the distance modulus. We can convert the distance modulus into an actual distance by putting together the information we've discussed so far. Cutting to the chase, little m minus big M equals five times log of D minus five, where little m is the apparent magnitude of the object, big M is the absolute magnitude of the object, and D is the distance to the object in parsecs. We can turn around and determine the distance of an object by solving for D. We'll save showing you all the math involved in that derivation for another video, along with some practice problems. You'll find these kinds of videos on our website, Socratica.com. You should sign up for our email list so we can keep in touch and tell you about our newest mathy videos. We're not finished, Socratica friends. There is yet one more phrase used by astronomers when they want to talk about the actual amount of light an object radiates, as opposed to the apparent brightness. This is the term standard candles. A standard candle is an astronomical object that has a known absolute magnitude. This is also commonly measured in solar luminosities. So what's a very bright thing we can use as a standard candle? There is the type 1a supernova, which involves a white dwarf exploding at a certain mass, which means we know the exact luminosity of the explosion. Unfortunately, these events don't last for very long. The most commonly used standard candles in astronomy are Cepheid variable stars. They're known as variable stars because their brightness varies. 
It turns out their luminosity varies predictably, and the absolute magnitude of the star can be determined from its periodicity. And then, when you know the luminosity, as well as how bright it appears to us here on Earth, you can calculate its distance. <clears throat> There's a whole interesting story about this discovery by astronomer Henrietta Leavitt, which really deserves its own video. Hmm. So, stay tuned. We're adding more astronomy videos on our website, Socratica.com. Why don't you take a little look-see? Ooh.